Remember your mercies, O Lord, and with your eternal protection, sanctify your servants, for whom Christ, your Son, by, shedding, by the shedding of his blood, established the Paschal Mystery, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God.
to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. In the days when Christ was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Torches and weapons. 
Jesus, knowing everything that was going to happen to him, went out and said to them, Whom are you looking for? They answered him, Jesus the Nazarene. He said to them, I am. Judas, his betrayer, was also with them. When he said to them, I am, they turned away and fell to the ground. So he again asked them, Whom are you looking for? They said, Jesus, Jesus the Nazarene. Jesus answered, I told you that I am. So if you're looking for me, let these men go. Now this was to fulfill what he had said. I have not lost any of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into his scabbard. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father gave me? So the band of soldiers, the tribune, and the Jewish guards seized Jesus, bound him, and brought him to Annas first. He was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, those who was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had counseled the Jews that it was better for one man should die rather than the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Now the other disciple was known to the high priest, and he entered the courtyard of the high priest with Jesus. But Peter stood at the gate outside. So the other disciple, the acquaintance of the high priest, went out and spoke to the gatekeeper and brought Peter in. Then the maid, who was the gatekeeper, said to Peter, You are not one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the guards were standing around a charcoal fire that they had made because it was cold and they were warming themselves. Peter was also standing there keeping warm. The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I have spoken publicly to the world. I have always taught in a synagogue or in the temple area where all the Jews gather, and in secret I have said nothing. Why ask me? Ask those who heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the temple guards standing there struck Jesus and said, Is this the way you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing there, keeping warm. And Jesus said to him, You are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the one whose ear Peter had cut off, said, Didn't I see you in the garden with him? Again Peter denied it, and immediately the cock crowed. Then they brought Jesus from Caiaphas to the Praetorium. It was morning, and they found themselves and they themselves did not enter the praetorium in order not to be defiled, so that they could eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and said, What charge do you bring against this man? They answered and said to him, If he were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. At this, Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. Then Jesus answered him, We do not have the right to execute anyone. In order that the word of Jesus might be fulfilled, that he said indicating the kind of death he would die. So Pilate went back into the praetorium and summoned Jesus and said to him, 
Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own, or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and a chief priest handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king? Jesus answered, You say I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is the truth? When he had said this, he again went out to the Jews and said to them, I find no guilt in him, but you have a custom that I release one prisoner to you at Passover. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, not this one, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a revolutionary. Then Jesus, then Pilate took Jesus and had him scourged. And the soldiers wore a crown of thorns and placed it on his head and clothed him in a purple cloak. And they came to him and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they struck him repeatedly. Once more, Pilate went out and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you, so that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple cloak. And Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priest and the guards saw him, they cried out, Crucify, Crucify him. him. Crucify him. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves, and crucify him. I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this statement, he became even more afraid, and went back into the praetorium, and said to Jesus, Where are you from? Jesus did not answer him, so Pilate said to him, Do you not speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power to release you, and I have power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me if it had not been given to you from above. For this reason, the one who handed me over to you has the greater sin. Consequently, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release him, you are not a friend of Caesar. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and seated him on the judge's bench in the place called Stone Pavement, in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was preparation day for Passover, and it was about noon. And he said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out, Take him away, take, take him, him away, away. Crucify, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have, we have no king but Caesar. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus in the middle. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. Now many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, 
Latin, and Greek. So the chief priest of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four shares, a share for each soldier. They also took his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top down. So they said to one another, Let's not tear it, but cast lots for it, to see whose it will be. In order that the passage of Scripture might be fulfilled that says, They divided my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. This is what the soldiers did. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. After this, aware that everything was now finished, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine. So they put a sponge, soaked in wine, on a sprig of hyssop, and put it up to his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he handed over the Spirit. Now since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day of that week was a solemn one, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken and that they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and then of the other who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one soldier thrust his lance into his side, and immediately blood and water flowed out. An eyewitness has testified, and his testimony is true. He knows that he is speaking the truth, so that you also may come to believe. For this happened so that the scripture passage might be fulfilled. Not a bone of it will be broken, and again, another passage says, they will look upon him whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, secretly a disciple of Jesus for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate if he could remove the body of Jesus, and Pilate permitted it. So he came and took his body. Nicodemus, the one who had first come to him at night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes weighing about 100 pounds. They took the body of Jesus and bound it with burial cloths, along with the spices, according to the Jewish burial custom. Now in the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden, a new tomb, in which no one had yet been buried. So they laid Jesus there because of the Jewish preparation day, for the tomb was close by. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
it seems the church uh, was packed for Ash Wednesday. And so the pastor asked the deacon if he would help out with the blessing of the ashes. The deacon said, yes. Now, what are the words I'm supposed to say? He said, remember, you are dust, and dust you shall return. So the pastor went to the middle of the church. The deacon went to the side. And as they were getting ready to start, he went back over to the pastor and said, what am I supposed to say? He said, remember, man, your dust, and dust you shall return. So the deacon went back to the station, forgot again, went back to the priest. The priest, who was a little upset about it, finally said, you are a dummy and you'll always be a dummy. The pastor didn't think any more about it and they both went back with the blessings. Finally, the pastor was done, went over to get the deacon and heard the deacon saying as he was blessing each person, you are a dummy, and you'll always be a dummy. Hopefully that didn't happen. I don't ever remember it. Today is a very special day. Because it is done. It is finished. It is over. These are the words in the minds of the Pharisees. The members of the Sanhedrin, Pilate, Herod, all the ones who spit on him and whipped him, to them it was finished. Finally, the revolutionary hanged down and was put to death. To many of the Jews, he was a blasphemer. To the Romans, a disturber of the peace. Was it not better that he die? than an entire people. And yet this cross, which is up in this church, on which Jesus was crucified, already was beginning to bring new life to men. Jesus gives the care of his mother to John. She is now our mother. She stands at the foot of the cross, walks the road with us. Mary is given to us all as well. And Mary says yes. And there to the side of the thief who is going to confession asking for the mercy of Jesus. Communion with God forever just like us. And Peter filled with remorse making an act of contrition for his denial of Christ. And a centurion thrusts a spear in the side of Jesus and makes the first act of faith when he says, Truly, this is the Son of God, one of the first Christians. A silent growth was taking place from the cross of Jesus. And so it is today. If his statutes and commandments to love and to the point of death are not taught, learned, and imitated, it would seem that it is over, that it is done, that it is finished. We cannot let that happen. That is why the church continues to celebrate the Trinium year after year, hailing the triumph of our Savior over sin and death. The moments after the cock crowed, announcing that our sin in the morning, the moments we realize we need a mother to comfort us, in the moment we seek communion and paradise, we catch a glimpse of our broken lives, that we need a Savior. He is there for us. He waits for us. He keeps vigil for us. And he fixes his grace upon us. During these trying times, we pronounce the hopeful words, Jesus, remember me.
Let us pray. Dearly beloved, for the Holy Church of God, that our God and Lord be pleased to give her peace, to guard her, and to unite her throughout the whole world, and grant that leading to our life in tranquility and quiet, we may glorify the God, the Father Almighty. Almighty, ever-living God, who in Christ revealed your glory to all the nations, watch over the works of your mercy, that your church spread throughout all the world may persevere with steadfast faith in confessing your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for our Holy Father, the Pope, that our God and Lord, who chose him for the order of bishops, may keep him safe and unharmed for the Lord's holy church to govern the holy people of God. Almighty, ever-living God, by whose decree all things are founded. Look with favor on our prayers, and in your kindness protect the Pope chosen for us, that under him the Christian people, governed by you their maker, may grow in merit by reason of their faith, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for our bishop, for all bishops, priests, and deacons of the church, and for the whole of the faithful people. Almighty and ever-living God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is sanctified and governed, hear our hum humble prayer for your ministers, that by the gift of your grace, all may serve you faithfully through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray also for our catechumens, that our God and Lord, may open wide the ears of their innermost hearts and unlock the gates of his mercy, that having received forgiveness of all their sins through the waters of rebirth, they too may be one with Christ Jesus our Lord. Almighty, ever-living God, who make your church ever fruitful with new offspring. Increase the faith and understanding of all catechumens that reborn in the thought of baptism, they may be added to the number of your adopted children through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for all our brothers and sisters who believe in Christ, that our God and Lord may be pleased as they live the truth to gather them together and keep them in his one church. Almighty, ever-living God, who gather what is scattered and keep together what you have gathered. Look kindly on the flock of your Son, that those whom one baptism has consecrated may be joined together by integrity of faith and united in the bond of charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray also for the Jewish people, to whom the Lord our God spoke first, that we may grant to them to advance in love of his name and faithfulness of his covenant.
Almighty, ever-living God, who bestowed your promises on Abraham and his descendants. Graciously hear the prayers of your church, that the people you first made your own may attain the fullness of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray also for those who do not believe in Christ, that enlightened by the Holy Spirit, they too may enter on the way of salvation. Almighty, ever-living God, grant to those who do not confess Christ that by walking before you with a sincere heart, they may find the truth, and that we ourselves, being constant in mutual love and striving to understand more fully the mystery of your life, may be made more perfect witnesses to your love in the world through christ our lord amen. amen let us pray also for those who do not acknowledge god that following what is right in sincerity of heart they may find the way to god himself Almighty, ever-living God, who created all people to seek you always by desiring you and by finding you come to rest, grant, we pray, that despite every harmful obstacle, all may recognize the signs of your fatherly love and the witness of the good works done by those who believe in you and so in gladness confess you the one true god and father of our human race through christ our lord amen, amen. let us pray also for those in public office that our god and lord may direct their minds and hearts according to his will for the true peace and freedom of all. Almighty, ever-living God, in whose hand lies every human heart and the rights of peoples, look with favor, we pray, on those who govern with authority over us, that throughout the whole world, the prosperity of peoples, the assurance of peace, and the freedom of religion may through your gift be made secure through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. For those in tribulation, let us pray, dearly beloved, to God the Father Almighty, that he may cleanse the world of all errors, banish disease, drive out hunger, unlock prisons, loosen fetters, granting to travelers safety, to pilgrims return, health to the sick, and salvation to the dying. Almighty, ever-living God, comfort of mourners, strength of all who toil, May the prayers of those who cry out in any tribulation come before you, that all may rejoice because in their hour of need your mercy was at hand. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for all those who are impacted by the coronavirus epidemic, for the sick and all who have died, for the safety of health care workers and those who care for the ailing, for the consolation of those who could not leave their homes, and for the encouragement of all who feel anxiety and fear during this crisis. O 
almighty, ever-living God, who in Christ revealed your healing power on earth. Watch over all who are suffering as a result of this global pandemic. Guide the decisions of all government leaders and keep safe those who care for the sick. Grant us all the grace to persevere in hope as we share in the cross of Jesus, your Son, that we may come to know the fullness of peace that flows from his resurrection. And may we all soon be joined together again around your altar to offer you worship and praise through <laughs> Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, for the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. May the receiving of your body, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring us to judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy, be for us protection in mind and body and a healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. The body of Christ.
Almighty, ever-living God, who have restored us to life by the blessed death and resurrection of your Christ, preserve in us the work of your mercy, that by partaking of this mystery, we may have a life unceasingly devoted to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's bow our heads and pray to God. May the abundant blessing, O Lord, descend upon your people who have honored the death of your Son in the hope of their resurrection. May pardon come, comfort be given, holy faith increase, and everlasting redemption be made secure through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.